Hello, Dave here with emergencyprepguy.com. I appreciate you stopping by. I just wanted to do a real quick video and show you how I introduce younger chickens into an established flock with the older hens. A lot of people say that size is what determines everything. I've, I've kind of experienced that uh, the younger chicks have younger chick brain and that affects a little bit as well. Not always, but it does. But anyway, I found a real simple way that is really slick that uh, makes it really easy to, to introduce the younger chicks into the flock. So let's take a look at it. Hi ladies, how you doing? Oh, now they're gonna want out. Stay in there girls, stay in there. Okay, so what you can see that I've done is just with scrap lumber, it's kind of funny. I've got all different kinds of lumber there that I use to build that thing. It's just stuff I had left over from other projects. Um, but you can see I built a grow out pin here. And what this does is it allows the older hens to meet the, the younger hens in an environment where the younger chickens are protected. Buff Orphingtons are pretty gentle. They're not as bad. They do fight. They do have pecking order, but they're not near as 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 ornery as Rhode Island Reds can be. Um, so having a a pen like this where they can all meet each other, and um, and by the way, it's important that the that the uh, the grow out pen be significantly smaller than the rest of the run. Um, matter of fact, if your chicken run isn't this big, then, um, you might, you know, put it on the outside out there because this is an invasion by these younger chickens of these guys turf. And so, but anyway, that's just a side note, but, uh, they've got plenty of room, so it's not too big of an invasion. So, but basically what you want to do is you want to put them in a place like this where they're protected they've got food and they've got water and they've got each other and these uh, ladies have already come up and kind of talked to them and they're, they're not overly interested in them but they have gone up and met them and I'm gonna leave them um, I'm not gonna let them free range today just to kind of force them to be around uh, these other girls now one thing that is super important if you've if your chickens are full grown and you've gotten them from talking about the new ones that you're adding to your flock and you've gotten them from you know some other person like a neighbor or something somebody in your town um, you want to quarantine them first you want to put them in a pen like this or another coop somewhere far away from your flock and not let like I wouldn't let these guys uh, uh, free range you just want to keep uh, the, the birds quarantined for a week or so and just verify that they don't have mites or lice or any type of respiratory issues or anything like that that could be contagious to the rest of your flock sometimes chickens will carry things um, that uh, and they don't have any symptoms but basically what I do is I'd quarantine them um, for a, at least a week and just make sure, watch them real close, make sure they don't have anything that they're going to spread to the other flock. And then you bring them in here once you're sure they're fine. You bring them in here and uh, in a setup like this. Now these chicks I raised, I, I got them just as they were a day or two old. They were just hatched. And uh, I've, I had them in the... Uh, the, the quail hutch is a grow out pen and I'm just, I've been watching them. I'm sure they don't have anything, so I'm sure they're fine. Um, so now it's just a matter of letting them all meet. Now, as far as the length of time when you have them in here, if they're, if they're at their full grown size or they're close to the same size as these other hens, um, then even just a day or two, leaving them in a, in a pen like this and letting them introduce, is probably plenty um, with these guys they're still pretty small but they're big enough 
that probably four or five days is all I'll need to leave them in this pen and then I can let them out with the rest of them. You can see there, those two there, they're kind of meeting and talking to each other, uh, establishing, hey, see, they're kind of pecking at each other through the pen, but they can't hurt the younger ones. And that's what makes this so nice. Now I've seen people introduce chickens that are quite a bit younger or smaller in size um, than these ones here, They're like seven, eight weeks old even. Um, as soon as they were fully feathered out enough um, and adapted to the temperature and being outside, they were introduced to the flock. But if they're, the smaller they are, the longer you wanna leave them in a pen like this before you let them out, um, <clears throat> just so that they get really well familiar with all of the flock. Uh, before you release them. So I would say these ones are probably, I'll probably leave them in here for four or five days. If they were smaller, I'd probably leave them in a week and a half, maybe even two weeks. Uh, and then they should be fine. Okay, it's a beautiful day in the chicken neighborhood. Um, it's been almost five days, four and three quarters or so since I put this grow out pen with the younger chickens in the chicken run. And uh, I apologize for my voice being a little bit rough. A couple days ago, I contracted a really sore throat and it's affecting my voice a little bit. Um, but anyway, sounds like we got a chicken up in there laying an egg. Um, but anyway, uh, when I first put the younger chickens in that grow out pen in there, um, they, were scared they would run away from the side when I would get there or when any of the uh, bigger chickens would come by. Um, but they soon realized nobody could get them in there and they got pretty comfortable. And without having a wire bottom on that, they've been able to dig in the wood chips and dust bath themselves. And they got plenty of food and water. I think they've really enjoyed uh, being out here as opposed to being in one of the quail hutches. I did have a one Rhode Island Red that was really trying to, uh, they're all sitting over there in the shade. <laughs> I did have one Rhode Island Red that was trying to dig under to get under to the little chickens. And so I just, easy solution, just dug it out a little bit, slid this strip of scrap plywood just under the edge there and then buried it with the wood chips. And then in, after that, whenever she, uh, Whenever she tried to dig, she just hit plywood. Hadn't really seen them trying to dig on either side. I've been watching it real close. Um, but that's all you need to do. <clears throat> all I would have needed to do if they started digging on the sides is, is similar to that. Just put a strip of plywood. Um, I didn't want to have a wire bottom because I wanted them to, the younger ones to be able to dust bath and enjoy themselves in there. So I did let the older chickens free range a couple of few hours a couple of the days but most of the time they've been in here with them uh, so I feel like they're you know really well acquainted now there will be some violence they will have to get established their pecking order but probably a lot of that's already been done um, and so what I'm going to do really quick is I'm going to put the camera down remove this uh, grow out pen <clears throat> and then I will uh film a little bit and let you kind of see the reaction. Okay, I've got the water out. I took the top off, I got the water out, I got the feeder out. It's detached from the, I, I had put a screw in to hold it next to the the run, that's, that's uh, screwed out. So now I, I'm just gonna tip open this, uh, this chicken run and just let them all out. Let's just kind of see how they go. See, they all know each other. I'm surprised there isn't a little more interaction. I'm going to have to put a little step block there to make sure the smaller couple of those chickens can reach the feed okay. And if they still can't, then I'll have to uh, put another source of feed in here. But I think they'll be fine. I think they'll be able to reach it. OK, 
Okay, since not a lot is going on, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the camera and just carry this out through the door. Um, and then I'll, okay, this little red hen's coming over. Uh, anyway, then I'll come back with the camera and we'll see if there's any squabbling. Now see how beautiful that is? All those baby chicks are snuggling with the, I don't know if I'd call it snuggling, I guess, but they're all hanging out over there right next to the Buff Orphingtons. Uh, nobody's fighting, nobody's picking on each other. Um, I honestly expected the Rhode Island Reds to be a little meaner on them this morning. Um, but nobody seems to be bothering them at all. They all know each other. They've had four or five days to talk through the and to see each other and to size each other up. So they're part of the flock. I'll come back uh, in 20 minutes or an hour or whatever and check on them one uh, final time and show you how they're doing. Hi, ladies. Yeah, they've been out here together. <clears throat> they don't appear to be fighting at all, other than when those guys want food or water, and these guys do too at the same time. They'll just kind of peck them and say, hey, me first. But as you can see, they're all intermingling around. They're getting along fine. Uh, every once in a while, you can... That Rhode Island Red right there, one of the Rhode Island Reds will peck at him. Like that. But they're not really being mean to him. I think they're part of the flock. They're just saying, hey, I get water first. Back off. My turn. Buff Orvingtons, I haven't seen them be mean to them at all, but... If it came to being you know, over water or food, I'm sure they would be. <laughs> so I think we have them successfully mixed into the flock. Okay, well, I hope that was helpful. I appreciate you watching the video all the way to the end. Again, please share this on your social media. That really helps us grow the channel. And liking the video helps us with the Google algorithm. And if you like this kind of content, we'd love to have you subscribe. So thanks so much, and we'll talk to you in the next video.